I've had this Hyperpixel 4 display in my project cupboard for about two years now. I bought it because it looked like the perfect display to pair with a Raspberry Pi to build a tiny cyber deck, because it plugs into and is driven entirely through the Pi's GPIO pins. So when Adam Stack reached out and asked me if I'd like to try out their new X30 Pro laser cutting and engraving machine, I thought this would be a great project to build with it. I'm going to make up the cyber deck in a clamshell design, with the display mounted directly onto the Raspberry Pi in the top half, and then a small keyboard in the bottom half. I found this repurposed keyboard from a Blackberry online, which has a small custom carrier board on it to make the keyboard and trackpad act as a USB connected mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to build this into the bottom half. To make up the case components, I'm going to use the Atomstack X30 Pro. The laser arrives partially assembled, with all of the parts really well protected. This is their new flagship gantry style laser engraving and cutting machine that now has a 6 core 33 watt laser module. It also comes with a fantastic air assist system to give you really clean cuts. They include everything you need to get set up and running, including tools, safety glasses and manuals, with the screws set out in packs marked for each step. So you should be able to get the laser assembled and running in less than an hour. The new 33 watt diode laser module combines the light produced from 6 6 watt lasers into a single focal point. This is a step up of 50% over their previous flagship, the X20 Pro. The actual laser module itself is not all that much larger than on the X20, although you can see a bit of a size increase. The increase in power allows you to cut through thicker materials or to cut thinner materials even faster. They claim it will even cut 0.1mm stainless steel sheets, so this is a really powerful machine. The other things I think set this machine apart from its competitors, besides the more powerful laser, are the display that allows complete offline control of the machine, so you can plug a microSD card into the controller and then control all of the positioning and cutting directly on the machine without a connected computer. And then the second is the air assist system. There are a couple of machines available with air assist, but the air assist on the Atom Stack machine is really good. So much so that I actually use my older X20 Pro to cut all of my plywood parts for my projects and for my products on my Etsy store, instead of my more powerful CO2 laser, just because of the quality of the cuts I get from it. And my CO2 machine also has air assist. This one just does a better job at getting the cuts to look really clean. So let me get the X30 Pro assembled and we'll then do some cutting tests on it to see what settings we'll need to use for the project. The air assist compressor is adjustable and connects to the top of the laser module where it's then directed down to a stream around the lens and then onto the cutting area. For the cutting surface, they give you a stainless steel sheet to protect your desk or work surface from the laser, but you'll want to use some prisms or a honeycomb bed to raise the workpiece slightly when you're cutting it, so that you're not charring the back of the piece and you've got some space for the smoke to escape. I'm using this Adam Stack honeycomb surface that I bought to use with the X20 Pro. It's really important to wear eye protection when working with these open style gantry lasers. This high power laser can permanently damage your vision in a fraction of a second if something goes wrong. Adam Stack provide a pair of safety glasses with the kit, but you should really get a pair of glasses from a reputable optics company that has done testing on the glasses and provides some form of certification. I'm going to run some cutting and engraving tests on a piece of 3mm plywood, as this is the material I'm going to be using for the Cyberdeck. I'm using Lightburn on a connected laptop to run the tests. The laser is going to cut a range of 5mm blocks at different speeds and laser powers, and we'll then be able to see which settings produce the best quality cuts. To start I'm going to do a cutting test with a range of 10 to 100mm per second for the speed, and 0 to 100% power. From that test we only managed to cut through a few of the higher power settings at low speed in the corner. So I've set the speed up a little bit too high for this material. You'll also notice how much cleaner the engraving looks on the numbers along the vertical axis without the air assist turned on. So that's something to keep in mind. Don't use the air assist when engraving and always use it when you're cutting. This is not the same material as a 3mm basswood that is commonly available online for laser cutting. It's a much better quality construction grade plywood, so it takes a lot more power to cut. So we'll turn the speed down a bit and try a second test. So 
so we've had much better success on the second test, with most of the bottom right half of the test cutting through. So that gives me a good idea of what settings I can use to get through the plywood. I'll probably go with something around the higher end of the laser power, around 90% power and a higher speed, say around 15mm per second. Next we'll try running the engraving test to get an idea of what settings will work to engrave a logo or something onto the cyberdeck. This is quite similar to the cutting test, but the laser runs back and forth across the whole area of the square to mark it. So clearly the bottom row speeds are too low, and just burnt through the wood entirely, but we have some good results in the middle of this range, so that's what we'll work with. Now we know what settings to use, so we just need a design to cut. I designed the two halves of the Cyberdeck in Inkscape. It's essentially two boxes, one that'll hold the pie and display and form the top half of the clamshell, and then a second to hold the keyboard at the bottom. Holding the two halves together are these hinges, which are shaped this way to limit the opening range of travel to a 45 degree angle. It'll also hopefully be able to sit on a desk when it's open without toppling over, but I'll have to see about this as there is a lot of weight in the top with the pie and display both in there. I also put my initials onto it as a logo to try and engrave something. Let's load a piece of plywood and engrave and cut the top half components. I've set Lightburn to engrave the logo first so that the parts don't shift when it's being cut. I'll leave Air Assist off for this. You can see the laser runs back and forth in lines, called scan lines, to mark the wood and create the logo. Once that's done we can turn on the air assist to start cutting. As with any of these open style gantry machines, one of the biggest drawbacks is that they produce a lot of smoke when cutting, and this isn't really easy to capture or direct away from the work area, so you'll need to work in a well ventilated space. Atomstack also sell an enclosure for the laser which makes it easier to connect up an extraction fan, so that's definitely something you'll want to consider if you're using it in a smaller space. Taking a close look at the pieces, you can see how well the air assist works on the X30 Pro. There's virtually no charring or smoke marks on the surface of the cut. First we'll glue the bottom sections of each half together. These fit together using the interlocking tabs that we've cut into them. We just need to make sure that we put them in the right way around. I'm using PVA wood glue to glue them together. With those drying we can mount the display onto the Raspberry Pi. It comes with a set of standoffs and a header extension, so let's plug that into the GPO pins. We can then screw the standoffs into the back of the display, then press the display into place on the Pi. Now let's mount the pie and display stack into the top half of the cyberdeck. The screws that were meant to hold the pie on the display standoffs are too short to go through the plywood as well, so I'm going to replace these with some M2.5 by 12mm screws. I've prepared a microSD card with Raspberry Pi OS on it, and I've pre-configured the software for the hyperpixel display, so it should work automatically shortly after booting up. The microSD card will still be accessible through the slots on the side of the cyberdeck, so we won't have to open it up again if we need to reflash the card. We can then press the bezel into place around the display. I could add a drop of glue around the edges to make sure it doesn't fall out again, but it actually fits into place quite snugly. Next let's do the same with the keyboard. We'll position it within the cutout and then glue the bezel in place to hold the keyboard. Then we need to add the hinges to join the two halves together. These just use some M3 by 12mm screws along with nuts and washers to mount them onto the two halves. I'm using two nuts on each so that the nuts can be tightened against each other and not the hinge, so that the hinge is able to still move freely. We also need to make sure that they are positioned correctly so that the end stops stop the display from opening too far.
Lastly, I'm going to glue some felt strips onto the outer edges of the display so it doesn't rub on the keyboard when it's closed, as this might scratch it. That's pretty much the Cyberdeck complete. I really like how compact it is when it's folded up. To use the Cyberdeck, we need to plug in a short USB-C cable between the keyboard and the Pi, as well as a power cable. A USB-C cable with a straight connector is fine if you're using it as a handheld device, but if you want to use it on a desk, then you'll need to use a 90 degree connector. Once it boots up, we can use the touchscreen or trackpad to move the cursor and open applications, and we can then type commands in using the keyboard. There's an under voltage warning coming up with this cable, so it probably isn't able to supply enough power to drive the display, keyboard and Pi as well. This warning doesn't come up if I use my USB-C adapter directly, but it doesn't have a 90 degree connector on it. The Cyberdeck uses around 4-6 to six watts when running, so it can be powered through a power bank for a couple of hours if you'd like it to be completely portable. I think it's come out really well. Let me know what you think of the Cyberdeck in the comments section below, and let me know if there's anything you think I should change. I also tried cutting a few other materials using the X30 Pro to test its capabilities. As I mentioned earlier, the plywood that I've used is much stronger than the basswood sheets that are usually marketed for these machines. The X30 Pro cuts through these sheets really easily at high speeds. It can also cut through black or dark opaque acrylic sheets. And finally, I wanted to try stainless steel sheets. I have these shims which have their thickness etched onto them, so I tried the 0.05mm one first. Adam Stack's suggestion was for 16mm per second and 60% power, which I thought sounded a bit too low and a bit too fast, but it managed to cut through the stainless steel perfectly. It does warp the material slightly around the edges because of the heat, but honestly the results were better than I expected. I also tried with a 0.1mm sheet, which is double the thickness of the first, but I wasn't able to get this to consistently cut all the way through, even with different settings. It got part of the way through the sheet in some areas, but I couldn't get a full clean cut. This is a high grade stainless steel, so that may play into it as well. I was just impressed that it could make it through the 0.05mm sheet. So this is a really powerful and capable machine, which I'm definitely going to be using in place of my previous favourite diode machine, the X20 Pro. Let me know what you think of it, and if you have anything else you'd like to see me try out on it in the comments section. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.